The Scoop. I'm Adam Schoenfeld. Today with a spectacular co-host, Karina Jett. Hi, Adam. How are you doing? Good. Diego made the money late last night in the shoe, along with Chip, Karina's husband, yes, who exactly. actually made the final table. Mm -hmm. uh, Diego didn't make the final table, but uh, he was so pumped up by his res result that he's going to play the limit shootout today. And so I get to, to be with a much, much better looking <laughs> co-host. How do you feel about that? Uh, I feel very special right now. I think you. that at least seven out of ten people would agree that you're better looking than Diego. <laughs> Only seven? <laughs> now, we're going to be discussing tells today. Uh, you've got more tells than Telly Savalas. I don't think so. Really? No, because I, I think I look mean at the table. You do? Yes. I don't think you look mean. You don't? No, you ever notice all the guys are all flirting with you and sucking up to you? Yeah, but that doesn't have anything to do with me looking mean. I think that they don't think you look mean. Maybe they kind of like it. Well, yeah. I like when you look sort of fierce, or anyone looks fierce. Yeah, I mean, I, I think most kind of Asian women, they kind of look scary at the table. Really? You don't feel intimid intimidated by female players? I don't, like to, players? I don't like to categorize people by race. That's your thing. <laughs> uh, here's Joe's book, Phil Helmuth Presents, Read em and Reap, A Career FBI Agent's Guide to Decoding Poker Tells. This is the most significant advance in, in poker psychology in the last 20 years, I'd say. Uh, congratulations, Joe. It's, it's great. Oh, well, book. thanks. It's good to be uh, here. So you could just size me up by looking at me? Pretty much. <laughs> I know. I feel like he's sizing me up every move I make, basically. See, well, are my arms are crossed. Does that indicate discomfort? Uh, it, it can, you know. And, and, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, you're talking about sizing people up is... The, the mistake I find with poker players who wait to size people up only at the poker table. That's a huge mistake. I, I think you can develop your skills at assessing people, assessing behavior, if you just do it all the time. You know, what's going on around me, not just in, in the poker room. And, and so it becomes ingrained in you. You don't have to really analyze it. You just get a sense for it. So yeah. We were talking earlier. I said I grew up in New York, and I think that New Yorkers are good at this because... In a big city, you have to keep your head on a swivel and know what's going on around you. Do you find that that's an advantage, that people from big cities can read other yeah. people well? People from big cities, people from other cultures. Because when you come uh, as an immigrant, I came to the United States, and your first language is the language of nonverbals. You're constantly assessing, do I fit in, not, and so forth. So, uh, you know, it, and it just goes to show you that nonverbal behavior is something that anybody can, can learn. And obviously, if you live in a big city, you have to have situational awareness, just as you do at the poker table where, you know, you want to sit down, but you want to be aware of what's going on around you at all times. Well, that's why I think, like, a lot of my poker game is kind of like verbally, like socially kind of getting tells from people, too. Sure, you know, and I've seen you play, and you do this very well because in challenging people or in discussing things with people their brain is forced to entertain whatever it is you're talking about right, and right. so the subtleties that um, maybe they would hide otherwise mm -hmm. you know maybe they would you know not show you that they're stroking their face or something show up because they figure well she's just talking right so it's just like no a social threat. thing but people yeah. don't realize like most of the time when I'm speaking to them on a social level at the poker table I'm trying to actually get information out of them now, are too. you guys all getting this <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's actually Machiavellian <laughs> so uh, well that's part of the the whole sure. poker aspect and uh, you know socially I think that helps me too uh, it's different for poker for a woman also yeah Joe you talk in the book about uh, the limbic system. Yeah. And I had never heard of that. Can you describe what that is? Because that seems to me to, to be the key to sure. understanding the. I behaviors. think it, it, it's, it's a good question. Um, those of you know who read Gavin De Becker's book, The Gift of Fear, uh, several years ago, uh, this is the first time that people started talking about the limbic system. And those of us who have been looking at behavior for a long time, this is what we anchor the behaviors on. Those behaviors that are driven by that part of the brain over which you have no control. And those are the ones that we can rely on. And so that's what basically the limbic system is about. Those that we can't control that react to the world, including, you know, the, uh, the flop. And, and you say that this, these are, this is a more primitive part of the brain, and so it reacts on an instinctive level, and it's, this is the uh, flight, fight, or what, what are the choices? That the well, the choices are you either freeze, flight, or distance, and fight. And, of course, at the poker table, what you see is the freeze is the, the person who holds his breath. 
uh, or the flight, the person who uh, you know sees uh, his whole card sees the flop and then just pushes away from the table, crosses it. You know, you know he's uh, it's over with him. Or the 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 fight, which what I've seen in poker is people will begin to argue or challenge each other, you know, or say, you know, well, you know you're an idiot. Well, why, why is that? I get that, that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. But, but that's part of the fight response in that a lot of times when we're weak, we feel like the only thing that we have left is then to challenge and to be offensive. Because if you've got a monster hand... Why do you need to fight? Right. You wouldn't be choosing a big confrontation when you've got the top. Yeah, just what do you think about like Chris Ferguson that always seems to have the same pose all the time? Well, you know that's it, it's interesting about Ferguson because I, I have a lot of respect for him. Um, he is very difficult to break, and one of the first things that I tried to do was to figure out if I could decode his behaviors right. and. A lot of it has to do actually with camera angles and editing. Most of the time he's shown face on, but a couple of times I noticed the, the camera was from the side and, and I could see, for instance, how he compresses his lips. Uh, he's one of the few male players that actually sits on his legs. So I'm not going to give you all the tells. But, <laughs> Come on. Uh, <laughs> but, well, I haven't had a chance to talk to him. But I would just say, notice these behaviors because, for instance, when we compress our lips, and it's very simple, we'll do something like this. Mm -hmm. This is an indicator of a little bit of distress. Now, when our lips are full, then things are good. And this is usually what you see in courtship behavior. Um, and so this begins to tell us, okay, well, why is this person pressing his lips? And so I would just tell you to just go from there and, and, uh, and look at these things. Now, uh, Phil Helmuth, who you have a business relationship with, and you know, yeah. his name is across the top of your book, yeah. uh, <laughs> you helped him with some significant tells, and you discuss these in the book, so we're not giving anything away out of school. Tell us what you did with Phil, because that was fascinating. For Phil, me. I had to literally, uh, one night, I, I grabbed him and put him up against the, the wall and I said, Phil, knock it off. Because Phil was hugging himself when, it, when he was bluffing and he was marginal. And I said, you're pacifying yourself as a child would want to be pacified. And uh, if I can decode this, uh, other people are going to be, be able to, uh, to, to, to see this. And, um, and and there were a few other things. He likes to always cross his arms, though. He like, does. He does. <laughs> and you have a good point, Karim. But it was the way he was holding he was, himself. He used to where do he this. Would literally, I, I, could, I remember seeing right. him do that. He Maybe would literally because hold he's like himself. treating himself like he like the baby he is. Yeah, because he wants to be comforted. <laughs> but he needs to be comforted if he's bluffing. So one of the things that he has done is is gone to uh, to, to this uh, you know where he this perched position where he blocks most of the, of the facial uh, and neck cues and from this position he, he not only blocks other people from being able to see him but he um, is able to then assess other people without really giving away a lot of talent. I, th I think that's been huge for Phil uh, and just the fact that he's conscious of it and now has a routine where he's trying to do the same thing every time is a big step in blocking any, any tells he might have. Uh, and you're doing the World Series of Poker Academy this the next few days, right? Yeah, in fact, it, it's uh, it starts today. And uh, by the way, Phil said if uh, if, if people come down and, uh, and join up, uh, that uh, he'll give them a special deal. I don't know what that is, but it's a unique opportunity to meet some very. T I mean, when you talk about talent, uh, you, you've got some of the the best talents. Who are talents. the pros that are going to be? There? Uh, Mr. Raymer will be there, who oh, I have okay. a lot of respect for, and um, uh, Scott. Um, Scott Fishman. Fishman will be there. Mark Safe was Mark scheduled. Safe is there. How do you there? get it? How do you get it to read on <laughs> Greg Raymer with those glasses? It's really tough. Well, you know, a lot. You know that you bring up something, Karina, that that's that's kind of interesting. People think that if you wear glasses, it hides everything. Right. Um, you know, you can have a poker face, mm -hmm. but no one has a poker body. Right. There's always something you can read. And uh, while you may be masking the pupil dilation and constriction, and as you know from, from our last class, you know, if you see something you like, our pupils dilate. Right. If you don't, they constrict. But it doesn't cover things like arching of the eyebrows. When you see a, a friend you haven't seen for years and you like them, you'll go, Hey, how are you? The same thing as if you get a great hand. You look at your whole card and you go, whoa, it doesn't matter if you have 
sunglasses and that's, on. That's almost subconscious and people aren't even aware they're doing it and it's very hard to mask that, isn't it? Very tough to, uh, very tough to mask. So, in fact, I tell people, look, if you're going to wear something, forget the glasses. Uh, wear a hat because we all have these furrowed lines that a lot of times show distress and so forth. And we can always sort of lower our head and then block a lot of the uh, the behavior. So if you're going to wear something, wear a hat. But, you know, don't, don't worry so much about the eyes. Karina, what do you think the most honest part of the body is? <laughs> <laughs> you're putting me on the spot. Did Let's see. Uh, probably your hands. No. You know, as Joe and I have researched. No, as Joe has, <laughs> as says in his what book. Is, what is it? In reality, the, the most honest part of your body is the, the face, number one, is the least reliable. Your feet are actually Oh, yeah, that's your right. Feet. You know what? I was, I, I, he made a point at the academy that I, I saw him to yeah. teach at, is that he, when you open your feet to somebody, like you're like in, inviting them in and you like them, but when you close your feet, it's like, and somebody says hello to you from another direction, and you just go, hey, and you don't open your feet to them, it's like you're closing them this, away this from you. This is, to me, the most fascinating part of the book, and the whole book's very interesting. Talk a little bit about what I could see in the feet at the table, and even yeah. if you're across the table, there are I'm ways to suss under out the what the table. feet are without... without exactly. Feet, yeah. Well, it goes back to the limbic system, and the limbic system is our emotional brain. So when we see something, kids who are waiting in line at Disney to get in, they're bouncing. Their feet, they got happy feet. And I've seen major players, they look, you know, the flop comes around and then all of a sudden their feet are moving. And they're bouncing. I say, well, you can't see the feet. Yeah, well, look at the shirt. What you see is the vibrations on the shirt. Wow. And that's what you're looking for. And it's an indicator that whatever they had before just became a whole lot better. Why? Because now they have happy feet. So when we look at, when we look at emotions and, and we say, you know, you, you see the shy person, their feet turns inward. You see the, uh, the, the couples who, you know, their feet move towards each other when they like each other and away from each other when they don't. When we're very happy, our feet become jubilant. And, um, and you know, so th this is one of the behaviors or um, it, you know, and sometimes you'll see it where the, the, the person will literally turn away from the table as the, let's say, the flop comes around and their feet turns toward the exit. Well, chances are that they disfavor whatever just happened. And they're liter their feet are literally saying, I don't like what happened, which is, from a survival perspective, this is what we've always they're done. They're ready to hit the door. <laughs> yeah, they're, exactly. They're ready to escape. Right. Yeah. And uh, you talk about if someone's bluffing, they might lock their feet or just hold them. Steady. Yeah, that's part of the uh, limbic freeze response where uh, when we want to uh, sort of hide in the open, we'll restrain ourselves. Mm -hmm. So as, uh, as T.J. Cloutier once told me, he says, yeah, bluffers all the time, they, they, they stop breathing or they hold yeah. their breath. Well, one of the things that I started to notice with poker players when they were bluffing is their feet were loose most of the time, except when they were, were bluffing, and then they would interlock them around the legs of the chair and That's sort right. of restrain oh, themselves. Wow. Um, this, again, is a survival tactic. Um, to, to so sort now of, whenever the flop comes out, I'm going to look under the table. Well, I've been doing that. <laughs> well, some, that happened just the other day. We were at, at, uh, at one of the uh, camps here. Um, we were, you know, playing a, a, a game, and finally, this the one guy had to make a decision, and he was just sort of nonplussed by it. Finally, he just said, "You know what?" And he looked on the table, <laughs> and he saw that the guy had happy feet. He said, "I fold," and sure enough, the guy had pocket aces on, and there was already an ace on the board. Wow! So, I mean, th this is just yeah. a, a sampling of an entire book of this very valuable insight. Now, you just. Uh, uh, flesh this out a little. You learned all of this when you were an FBI agent and you had to interrogate guys yeah. and, and sometimes more than a poker pot was at stake, right? You had some... No, you know, it's actually, I started studying it uh, back in 71 uh, when I went off to college and I just continued to study it and then I became the Bureau's expert uh, of, uh, on nonverbal behavior. And yeah, obviously the stakes were much higher. These, uh, you know, my job was to catch spies, national security issues were at stake. But you know, the, the, the behaviors were the same. The, the things that bother you uh, at the table, the things that, that, that bother or that, that make you feel good at the table are the same things that would happen in an interview or some other setting. So there is no difference. The brain controls all behavior. Now, Karina, you were saying earlier that uh, 
usually they would, they would just beat the information out of guys. Isn't that what you would claim? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's what she would do. Yeah. You just take the well, phone I book. Try I saw, I saw NYPD Blue. She, I know it. She verbally beats them up. I've if seen her. If a guy's not giving you the right information, you just take the phone book to the head. Right. Yeah. Uh, Joe, thanks like a lot it, for spending a little time uh, with us. Great. Today. It's good uh, to see I you really both. highly recommend Joe's book to anyone who wants to improve yes, their game. Yes, and Joe will also be having an academy with the World Series and of Poker. You Look teach up with, the website. Like the Phil camps. That's right. right. And then I've got, uh, if they, if they want to check at uh, NavarroPoker.com, we've got another one coming up in November, great. and it should be a lot of fun. I may attend that. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I think this is super I'm definitely attending it. <laughs> thanks. Good Joe. to see you both. Right. Thank you. Thanks. All right.